Have you ever thought that what if we could install Windows automatically? If you install Windows very often, then choosing language, entering a username, setting up partitions, it gets repetitive. Recently, I got a comment on my video for auto unattended Windows installation. So I decided to create a video that everyone can follow to achieve this easily. Well, we can perform an unattended install and it works using a special files called answer files. These files contains all the answers to the questions that Windows prompts during installation and few more additional details. But there is a problem. Creating these files by following Microsoft's official documentation requires deep technical knowledge, and it's way too complicated, even for a simple Windows install. But in this video, I'll show you a much easier way. Instead of building these files from scratch, we will use a simple online tool to generate them in minutes. By the end of this video, you'll have a fully automated Windows installation process. So let's get started. To install Windows, obviously we need the Windows ISO file. If you already have it, you can skip this part and move on to the next section, or else you can follow along. To download the Windows ISO file, I will go to Google and search for Windows 11. Let's click on the first link, which is from the official website. Now scroll down a bit until you find the section Download Windows 11 Disk Image. Here, we need to select Windows 11 Multi-Edition ISO for x64 devices. Then, click on the Download Now button. Next, we need to choose the product language. For me, it's English, but you can choose whatever language you prefer. Once done, click on Confirm. Now, you'll see a 64-bit download button. Just click on it. And save the ISO file in your preferred location. It will take some time to download, but we don't need to wait. While it's downloading, we can continue with the next step. By now, you should have an idea of what an answer file is. Basically, it's an XML file that contains all the details Windows usually prompts the users to provide during installation. You can find detailed instruction on Microsoft's official documentation, which is a bit complicated. But don't worry, I will show you a website from where we can easily create it. So let's go to Google and search for Windows 11 unattended XML. Here, let's open the first link from schneegins.de. This is the website which will help us to generate the answer file. We need to just fill this form, then this website will use those details to create the answer file, which we can download as XML file or ISO file. This entire process is going to be very easy. So let's start filling this form. The first section is for region and language settings. Here we have two options. Install Windows using these language settings and select language settings interactively during Windows setup, which requires manual selection during installation. Since we want a fully automated setup, let's go with the first option, as this will automatically apply the language settings from the answer file. Here we can choose the primary language and keyboard layout. We can even add more if needed. I will only update the language to English India and rest of the details will update accordingly. Moving on to the next section, we have the processor architecture settings. We don't need to do anything here. In the setup settings, we can predefine a few options that will be used during our Windows installation. Like we can bypass Windows 11 requirement checks, such as TPM, secure boot, and other system verifications. If your system does not meet these requirements, you can select this option to continue the installation. Then we have option to allow the Windows 11 installation without internet connection. If you have watched my previous video, you might remember I have disconnected the internet and then bypassed the mandatory Microsoft sign-in. If you want to achieve that, then we can do it easily from the user account section. It is mentioned to enable this option only if your computer truly doesn't have an internet connection. Next, we have an option to use a distribution share or a configuration set. These are typically used for advanced deployments, but I don't need this setting. Then we have another option to hide any PowerShell windows during the installation. I will enable it for this installation. Next, we have a section for setting the computer name. Here, we can either let Windows generate a random name or enter a specific name manually. There's also an advanced option to use a Windows PowerShell script to set the name dynamically. 
But to keep things simple, I'll go with the random name option. After that, we have a setting for Compact OS. This feature allows Windows to optimize storage usage. But for this setup, I will select Do Not Use Compact OS. Next, we have the time zone selection. While we can manually choose a specific time zone, I'll leave it to Windows to determine it automatically based on the selected language and region settings. In the partitioning and formatting section, the default option is set to partition the disk interactively during Windows setup, but we don't need this. Instead, we'll select the second option, which allows us to manually specify how Windows will partition and format the hard disk. By default, the partitioning scheme is set to GPT, which is the standard for most modern devices running UEFI. However, if you're using a legacy BIOS system, you'll need to select MBR instead. Next, we have the option to configure Windows Recovery, but it is mentioned that Windows 24H2 ignores this setting entirely. So we will simply leave it as it is. There's also an option to use a custom disk part script to configure the disk, which can be useful if you want a predefined setup. Moving on to Windows Edition selection. If you don't have a product key, you can use a generic key to install Windows without activating it. I'll be using the Pro version, but you can choose any edition as per your needs. We can also enter our product key here. However, if you prefer to keep it private, you can manually enter it later during Windows setup or add it to the answer file instead of entering it on the website. Next, we have the user account section where we can create local accounts automatically. We can also add online or offline accounts interactively, but I will go with the first option. For this setup, I'll set the account name to tech and enter a password. I recommend not sharing your actual credentials here. Anyways, we can always change the password after installation. For the user group, I'll keep it set to administrators and remove any additional users. There are also options to specify actions on the first login, but I'll leave them at their default settings. If needed, we can obscure the password using Base64 encoding in the XML file, which can be useful when sharing the configuration. Since I don't need this, I'll leave it unchecked. Next, we have the password expiration settings. I'll select the option passwords do not expire to prevent any automatic expiration. Then for the account lockout policy, I'll keep the default settings as it is. Now in the file explorer tweaks, I'll enable the option show all files to make hidden files visible. Along with that, I'll also enable always show file extensions for security reasons. Next, I will check the box for open file explorer to this PC instead of quick access. Moving on to the start menu and taskbar settings, we have the option to customize how the search box appears in the taskbar. By default, it's set to full, which works fine for me. Additionally, there's an option to select specific icons to display on the taskbar, but I'll leave it as it is since the default setting works well for me. Then there's an option to disable widgets. Since I don't use them, I will check the corresponding box. Similarly, if you don't want to see Bing results in your start menu or taskbar searches, you can check the box to disable it. For those using Windows 10, there's an option to customize start menu tiles. However, if you're on Windows 11, this setting is ignored, as it's mentioned here. In the System Tweaks section, there are plenty of customization options available. Since I use RDP across all my systems, so I will enable it. By default, BitLocker encryption is enabled, but I prefer to disable it. Additionally, I'll hide the Edge first run experience to skip unnecessary setup prompts. I'll also check the box for deleting Windows.old folder, if it exists. For visual effects, I'll select Adjust for Best Appearance. This enables all visual effects for a smoother and more visually appealing experience. If you have limited resources, you can choose the option for best performance. If you're using a non-activated version of Windows, you might have noticed that it doesn't allow you to personalize desktop icons. However, there's a way to enable them manually with PowerShell. Checking this box ensures that desktop icons appear automatically, even on non-activated versions. I'm selecting a few icons based on my preference. You can choose what works for you. Now let's proceed to the next step. 
In the Virtual Machine Support section, you can select the virtualization environment you're using. Since I'll be installing Windows on Proxmox, I'll choose that option. To get more details on the setup process, I'll open the Usage Notes in a new tab. This documentation provides step-by-step -step instructions for different virtualization platforms. And if we scroll down, we can see exactly what needs to be done for each one. If you're installing Windows on bare metal hardware, you'll need to download the XML file. Simply place this file alongside the Windows setup files on a bootable USB drive and you're ready to go. For Proxmox, the process requires the answer file and the vertio ISO, along with the Windows setup files. If you don't have the vertio drivers downloaded, you can get them directly from here. We'll take care of this while setting up the virtual machine, so let's continue further. Now I will go back to the form. Here we have the option to configure Wi-Fi settings, but I'll skip this step. There are other customization options available as well, but they aren't necessary for my setup. Next, we'll adjust the personalization settings. I'll set the theme to dark mode and choose a color as per my preference. While Windows doesn't allow full theme customization in the free version, these basic settings can still be applied. Moving on to the Remove Bloatware section. Since this is a clean install, I'll select all bloatware for removal. However, I'll keep a few apps that I actually use. There are also some advanced options available, but I won't need them for this setup. Finally, let's scroll to the bottom. Since I'm installing Windows on Proxmox, I'll be using the ISO file for the installation. I will also download the XML file as well to take a look at its contents. This file stores all the details we entered in the form, so if you ever need to make changes, you can do it directly in this XML file. Now, if you're working with an ISO file instead, there are multiple tools available that allow you to modify it, but I won't be covering that in this video. So let's move forward and create the virtual machine. First, let's go to Proxmox. We need to upload all three ISO files required for the setup. I've already uploaded the Windows and Vertio ISOs, so I'll quickly upload the unattended ISO now. Next, let's create a virtual machine for the Windows installation. However, don't add the Vertio ISO file through the VM creation wizard. I've tried it before, and for some reason, it didn't work. Once the VM is created, go to the hardware section and manually add the Vertio ISO, a CD, or DVD drive. Do the same for unattended ISO as well. With that done, we can now start the VM from the console and let the automated installation handle everything. Now we will just wait while it takes care of the entire process. Once we reach the Windows desktop, a script will automatically run to apply dark mode and other system settings. But first, let's check the remote desktop connection. As you can see, we're able to connect using RDP without any issues. Now I will quickly make a few adjustments. And with that, the specified desktop icons are in place and the dark theme has been applied successfully. However, the wallpaper is still in light mode. This is something that might be fixed in a future update, but for now, I'll show you exactly how to change it manually. Simply navigate to this PC. From there, go to the C drive, then open the Windows folder. Inside it, find the web directory, then go to wallpaper. And lastly, open the Windows folder. This is where all the default wallpapers are stored. Now right click on the dark theme wallpaper and choose set as desktop background. Now if you check back, the wallpaper should be changed to the dark one. 
If you're interested in experimenting, you can explore the XML file that controls these settings. Let me know in the comments if you find anything interesting. And if you have any cool customizations or tweaks to share, I'd love to hear about them. With this setup, you can now easily install Windows on multiple systems or even create customized XML files for different setups. If you've tried something unique, definitely let me know. I'd love to see what you come up with. And if you enjoyed this video, you might want to check out the next one. Also, don't forget to like, share, and comment your thoughts.